Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just want to do a quick video about how uh, a guerrilla style filmmaker like myself rolls. You don't have to have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment to get decent um, footage and stills for YouTube level uh, videos. Of course, if you're doing um, you know, commercial work and professional work, yeah, you're going to need all the good stuff. But for YouTube videos, um, getting the footage, getting in and out, and getting tight places and traveling light, doing guerrilla style filmmaking, um, which is basically what I do on YouTube, this is really all you need. And the most expensive thing here really is the camera and the lens. And all the other stuff is just uh, budget stuff. So right off the bat, uh, like every videographer and photographer, you need a good camera. This is my Canon 70D, which is known for its video capabilities and awesome STM lenses. Uh, there's tons of videos on YouTube that already talk about how awesome this camera is and I love it It makes my life so much easier the Wi-Fi and the touch screen and uh, just all the manual controls It's just awesome. It's just a good, a good really good camera for um, YouTube and for videography in general um, You can film uh, a featured movie with this if you really wanted to and uh, since I do a lot of uh, events where um, I'm close up on the uh, subject or I'm in tight places where there's a lot of people around me I do like to use the kit lens which is an 18 to 55 millimeter lens uh, basically a wide angle lens um, I would probably rather have the 18 to uh, 135 zoom but um, I just didn't get around to buying that one I do have a 250 millimeter STM lens but um, I just bring that as a, a backup in case I need to reach out further um, if I think I'm going to be filming something far away like as a um, a track event or something like that but for the most part um, doing car shows and stuff like that uh, the wide angle is what I really need and then obviously I have a backup camera this is just a Sony high def camera I've had for years but um, this is a beater camera I could literally um, throw this in the back of the car and not even care if it bangs into anything because it's so old but you know what? it works and it gets HD video which is good because if this gets damaged stolen lost whatever falls in the water and I can't get footage at least I can still get footage with this. You know, I can still make money by getting the footage with something. Something is better than nothing. And it's 1080p, so that's nice. And I have spare batteries for this in there too. And then I also uh, have the capability of going really fisheye, and, uh, or if I'm gonna go into a wet environment, um, I can get GoPro video. And this is a Hero 3 Black Edition that I bought, uh, I think about two years ago at CES. And uh, this is awesome. You can get those really awkward camera angles or tight spaces, super tight spaces that even a DSLR can't fit inside. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I built this PVC handle on my own. It's pretty easy to do. There's videos on YouTube how to do that. And I have spare batteries for this too. So I have three different cameras to uh, get all the footage and stills that I need. Um, now, some of the ways to uh, support these cameras um, you would think that I normally I would run with a, a nice high quality tripod. You know what? I don't. With guerrilla style filmmaking, I'm on the move. I'm going. I'm moving in and out of places fast. And uh, I need to be light. And I built this, um, They call some people call it a rifle stock style shoulder rig. So here's a closer view of that PVC rifle stock shoulder rig that I made. And this is just a cheap film city. Um, a uh, quick detach mount that I bought off of eBay. It was really cheap. I forgot how much it was. It was less than uh, 20 bucks or something like that. And there's the uh, plate for it. It's not metal. It's plastic, but it is very strong. And you just slide it on just like you do any other um, quick detach plate. And it has a locking mechanism so it doesn't fall off if it's not locked down. But you can lock it down with this lever on this side. So you, you lock it down. And now you can put this into your shoulder. You can uh, zoom or do manual focus, whatever you need to do with this hand, and this hand stabilizes the camera. Or you can go up here, but I got a little lanyard loop here. This is 550 cord. It can hold obviously 550 pounds of weight, so it's not gonna break anytime soon. And it's lightweight and thin. I like thin. I don't like the big, huge leather straps on here. But um, you can hold the camera like this, push this into your shoulder, and now you can uh, adjust your zoom or focus. And then obviously you can, uh, actuate the shutter and control the camera on the back just like that and it's nice too because now you have the shoulder stabilized you can put your cheek down here just like on a rifle and now you have two points of contact one on your cheek one on your shoulder and then you have your hand here and then you either have your hand over here that's four points of contact 
So this is very stable and I can get my eye up on there. I do have an extended eye cup and I can really get stable shots with this thing. And if I need to go video, I can put the camera on my chest and hold it like this and then put the uh, LCD screen down like that. And again, adjust zoom, pull focus with the uh, LCD screen, which is uh, uh, something that a lot of people like with the 70D. But it, it's a filled expedient, very quick steady cam or uh, camera brace or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this really stabilizes the shot. I can get a pan shot, I can get tilts, fairly smooth. Uh, it's not going to be like a, a fluid head, but again, this is guerrilla style filmmaking. So I'm getting steady shots just from handheld because I can put this rifle stock into my arm. I can even hold it down underneath my arm if I wanted to. But as you can see, this little arm brace really changes the game as far as going handheld goes. But it's still small. As you can see, it's not very big. I, st I can still go handheld. People don't really um, think anything of it. Unlike a big, huge, clunking um, monopod or even tripod that I'd be lugging around, putting on your shoulder, you know. This is really compact, lightweight, so really cool thing. Um, I'll show you guys how to make this in another video. It only costs you like five bucks to make. And of course, every photographer and videographer needs to have a tripod, even if it's a little tiny one like this. This is just a compact backpack size tripod that will fit inside my backpack, not on the outside. And this is just enough to get the job done. The legs just uh, extend out. It's not meant for um, hardcore use. It's just for an emergency. If I really need to get a steady shot and leave the camera standing, um, I could set up this tripod to do it. Would I want to do it all the time with a full-size DSLR like this? No, absolutely not. But um, I could do it definitely no problem with the video camera and the GoPro. And I can get away with it with the DSLR. It's just not something I'd like to do all the time because it's not heavy duty. It's, it's super lightweight. So I have three cameras and I have three sets of batteries that I have to manage. So I keep all the batteries and wires and stuff inside a VanQuest PPM or Personal Pocket Maximizer, which is the perfect size to hold all these batteries. It's kind of a tactical bag. And uh, VanQuest makes awesome gear. Their zippers are reversed, so they're, they're uh, high quality and well protected versus standard uh, gear. Check out VanQuest. You'll see real quick that they're awesome stuff at a good price. But um. Yeah, I have uh, the batteries for each camera. I actually have three batteries for my, uh, my primary camera. I have two batteries for my um, Sony uh, 1080p camera, and I have two batteries for my GoPro. So that's enough to get any footage I need throughout the day. And then I have this Goal Zero backup battery pack. These are uh, AA rechargeables by Goal Zero. And I have my phone charger in here. And the reason why I have this is because uh, when I'm doing Wi-Fi, pictures to my phone and then phone to Facebook or whatever I'm doing. Um, I'll even take pictures and video with my phone sometimes, believe it or not. But uh, I have a phone charger in here so I can charge my phone up in my backpack. So I, I bet my phone's not dead at the end of the day if I have to make calls or call clients or get directions somewhere. Um, I always have communication and directions and all that good stuff with my cell phone. This is a lifesaver. Never go without having abilities to charge your phone. And then over here another VanQuest PPM or a pocket maximizer. This is my hygiene believe it or not. When you're out there talking to other photographers, talking to um, the talent, you know, models, um, manufacturers or whatever at, at their booths or just talking to people in general, you want to have um, nice breath. So I have Altoids, we've got uh, some Listerine in here, I got a little toothbrush and then uh, also a pen so you can take notes. I know you can do that on your phone, but what if your phone's dead and this is dead too? For just as a as a worst case scenario, have a pen and a piece of paper. Um, and then also I have a little flashlight here just in case you know you're shooting after dark and you're looking for stuff in your bag. And then obviously I have business cards. Always have business cards. I can't tell you how many times I've been at an event and I didn't have business cards and people are like, hey, where can I view your pictures or videos or where can I contact you for work? Um, you got to have business cards. You can get them free on vistaprint.com. So you don't have to spend any money on those if you don't want to. Obviously a good cell phone, smartphone. And then the backpack. This is going to be the funniest part of this video, probably the weirdest part. You're going to be like, what? Believe it or not, this is 
a cheap North Face backpack, not cheap actually, uh, it's cheap to me because I found that at the Goodwill for five bucks. Normally these brand new are probably like, I don't know, hundred bucks maybe, but I got it at the Goodwill. It was like five bucks. It's old. It's just a standard backpack. Nothing to talk about. The reason why I'm using this versus say a expensive $150 Tamarack photographer's backpack is because for one, that photographer's backpack doesn't have a lot of storage space for anything other than a camera. Um, you can go with a bigger one, but then that's more expensive. But the reason why I carry everything in this standard run-of-the-mill backpack is because I use this. This is a stool. It's a collapsible folding stool that you can put in a backpack. And the reason why I have a stool is because when you're at um, certain events, and I learned this the hard way, uh, you're standing at an event at a big crowd and there's people um, just having nine inches of height above everybody else makes a world of difference and this does the job right here. I can get the shots I need just by getting uh, nine inches of height. Uh, or if you're sitting behind a barricade and it's awkward, there's no place to sit, but you want to rest your camera up on the barricade, uh, you could use this as a stool to sit down and it doesn't kill your back and your knees. So it, you, you have, always have a place to sit, which is, I know it sounds weird to some people, but when you're out on, at a shoot for you know, five to ten hours, um, having some place to sit is a big deal. <laughs> it really is. So, so um, a couple other things before I go. Um, I live in the southwest where it's really dry. There's not a lot of rain, but um, I like to carry an umbrella just in case um, it does rain on me. But even in um, sunny environments like uh, the desert out here in Las Vegas, an umbrella will come in handy just to keep you um, out of the heat because it'll block the sun. So that's actually a good thing to carry. Um, but if you don't want to carry an umbrella, I usually carry some type of uh, shamag, I guess they call this. Uh, a lot of guys in the desert know about these. Uh, Vegas is in the desert, so um, this, is, this really comes in handy. Cover your head, cover your neck, and keeps you from getting fried big time. That's pretty awesome. But if you don't want to be all, you know, goofy looking with that, you know, but most of the places out here, it's not a big deal. But um, just carry a good hat, you know, protect yourself from the sun. And then obviously sunglasses and sunblock. But this is good, though, for people who don't want to wear sunblock, which I don't like to have sunblock on my neck. So anyway. All right, guys. So that is a quick look at Guerrilla Style Films and uh, how I roll with just the bare essentials. Again, you don't need a whole lot of money. You just need the right gear for exactly what you need to do. And you can still get good shots. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks a lot.